In this example, we're told we have data measured from tests of a centrifugal pump operating at 3,500 RPM. The data are given here. So this is the inlet section of the pump. So if I sketched out the pump here, we're told this is the inlet. So the flow is going this way. And we're given some information about the outlet as well. So we're given information about the pressure, gauge pressure, uh, the elevation above some reference point, so you can see the outlet's a bit higher than the inlet. I guess I didn't draw the picture exactly right. Uh, and then the average speed of the flow coming in and out. And the flow rate is given here, so 11.5 cubic meters per hour. The torque applied to the pump shaft is there. And we're asked to find the total heads at the pump inlet and outlet, the hydraulic power input to the fluid, and the pump efficiency. And we're also asked to specify the electric motor side size needed to drive the pump if the motor uh, efficiency is 85%. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with calculating the head at the pump inlet and outlet. So the head is going to be the pressure head plus the velocity head plus the elevation head. So we're, we're going to do this at both the inlet and the outlet. We'll do it two times here. And we'll just make use of the information given in the table. Okay, so uh, the pressure is given up here. Uh, we're told that we're dealing with, I believe we're told we're dealing with water. I guess maybe it doesn't really say that we're dealing with water. We're going to assume that we're working with water. Typically pumps are used to pump water. I mean, not always, but that's a pretty good assumption. Uh, so we know, you know, the density and gravity, the average velocity we're given, and the elevation we're given. So we can go ahead and calculate the heads at the inlet and the outlet. So let me write this down. So the head at the inlet comes out to be 10.2 meters, and the head at the outlet, when you plug in the numbers, comes out to be 45.4 meters. So uh, obviously you see that there's a head rise between the inlet and the outlet. Uh, one other thing I should mention is I base this head rise on the gauge pressure. We're given the gauge pressure. So uh, gauge pressures are typically used uh, when you're analyzing these pump systems often because you're dealing with pressure differences. You could use, it, to be honest, it really doesn't matter whether you use absolute or gauge pressure because usually you, you're interested in a delta H, right, which would be like the, the head rise across the head rise across the pump, so it'd be like the, the head rise as you go across the pump. And usually that's what you're interested in, so it doesn't matter whether you use a gauge or an absolute pressure because uh, the, the, the additional atmospheric pressure, if you use absolute pressure, would cancel out because you're just taking the difference. Okay, so I should just make a note that these head rises are based on, or these head calculations are based on the gauge pressure that's given. Okay, the next thing we're asked to find is the hydraulic power input into the fluid. So the power can be found from the head rise using the following relation. It'll just be density times gravity. Or actually, let me rearrange this, put it in a more familiar form. So the head is the power divided by the density times the volumetric flow rate times gravity. So this is the power, so this is the head into fluid, and this is the power into the fluid. We can rearrange that to find the power into the fluid. And uh, again, we know we know the density, that's density of water. We know the volumetric flow rate that's given right up here. The gravity, of course, is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the head into the fluid is this delta H. So this head into the fluid is really just this delta H. It's, it's the head rise, that w the additional head rise in the fluid. So if you plug in the numbers for this, what you'll get is that that power comes out to be 1100 watts. So that's the, the power that gets into the fluid. Now the next thing we're asked to find is the pump efficiency. So the way we're going to find that is uh, we know the power that actually makes it into the fluid and we're going to divide that by the power that we put into the pump. So the efficiency of the pump is the power that makes it into the fluid divided by the power into the pump. 
right? If it was 100% efficient, then all the power that we put into the pump would make it into the fluid, but of course it's not 100% efficient. So the power that goes into the fluid, we just found, that's this term. Now the power that goes into the pump, we can find by the information given here that we're told that the, the torque applied to the pump shaft is 3.68 Newton meters. And so the power that goes into a pump or goes into that shaft would be the rotational speed of the shaft times the torque. Okay, and the rotational speed we're given as well, it's uh, 3,500 RPM. So let me just make a note of that. This is 3,500 RPM, and this is the 3.68 Newton meters. Now there's a unit conversion you have to do here. You can't just multiply RPM times Newton meters and get watts. You'd have to convert this to rotations per uh, second. So convert. I'm sorry, to uh, radians per second. Convert to radians per second. And then you can multiply it through. Okay, but if you do that, what you'll find is that this comes out to be about 80% for the efficiency. Okay, um, <clears throat> so the next thing that we need to do is find the, um, the electric power requirement. Well, uh, I, I take that back. The next thing we're trying to do is uh, trying to do is specify the electric motor size needed to drive the pump. So if we, it's um, since the pump is only eighty percent efficient, uh, we need to just find the power that we have to put into the pump. That's really just this part, part, the power that we have to put into the pump. Okay, so the power that we have to put into the pump just our omega times the torque, which when you work out those numbers, that comes out to be, uh, I think it's about 1350 watts. Okay, so that's, we need our electric motor to provide at least that much power so we can drive our pump. Now we're told that the motor itself, the, you know what, let me, let me change this. Let's just say it's, the power that we have to put into the pump has to be at least as large as the omega times t, right? Because that's only if the electric motor is 100% efficient. Now the actual electric motor, we're told, is 85% efficient. So to find the power that we have to put into the, into the motor will be the power that we have to put into the pump divided by the efficiency of the motor, right? Because we have to put a little extra power into the motor because it's not 100% efficient. And so this would be the 1350 watts divided by the 85% efficient motor. We're told it's 85% efficient right up here. So that comes out to be, uh, what is it, about 1590 watts. So we have to put in about uh, 1590 watts into the electric motor because it's only 85% efficient, only uh, 13, uh, 1350 watts make it into the pump. The pump's not 100% efficient, it's only about 80% efficient. So in the end, 1100 watts makes it into the fluid. And that 1100 watts corresponds to a, a head rise of this delta H here. Okay, so it, it's, it's changing the head in the fluid from the inlet to the outlet. So that power we put into the fluid results in a delta H in the fluid. Okay, I think that covers everything for this example, so we'll end it there.